morning to all our St. Andrew's friends. I was hoping that by now we would all be together again and worshipping in our sanctuary as we did in days of yore. Who knew that we would still be fighting COVID-19? How long has it been? Way too long. It's causing much anxiety for many, many people. For children returning to school, or facing online learning for the first time, for teachers with ever-changing timetables. We have one grandchild in university and all her work is online. Two other grandchildren go to school part-time and work at home online part-time. Fortunately, grandparents are available to do a school pickup in order to get the children home in time for their online session as there are no school buses for them. And of course, we are all nervous about the possibility of a second wave of COVID-19, which could be as bad or even worse than the first one has been. But despite our fears and anxiety, we invite you to light a candle safely in your home, as we do each Sunday in church. Let's try and remember that no matter how anxious and far apart we may feel, Jesus is with us always by his Spirit. We are not alone. Jesus is drawing us closer together in his love. He is always with us, and we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Welcome to St. Andrew's United Church in Hamilton. This service is for Sunday, September the 27th. I'm Ken McDonald. Cindy Jeriga is our music director. Today we are glad for a solo for, from Jennifer Harwood, and Spencer is doing the mixing, which is an important technical job now. Thanks to the Brockway family for lighting the Christ candle. Linda Bonteith will be reading the scripture later on. In the book, The Temple of Modern Life by James Adams, there is a story of an explorer on an urgent march through the jungles of the upper Amazon. Good progress was made for a couple of days, and then one morning the native bearers were sitting solemnly on their haunches, making no preparations for traveling further. Why? the explorer asked, and their chief explained, We are waiting. We cannot move further until our souls catch up with our bodies. Is there a chance that we sometimes run away from our souls? That we move so fast from here to there in this time that we run off and leave our souls behind? From time to time, I suspect that we need to give our souls a chance to catch up. We race along without giving very much attention to them, and we sort of leave them back there somewhere. Part of what we are just doesn't keep pace with the rest of us. Sometimes one says, I need to collect myself, or pull yourself together. It may be a very real need that is expressed there. Often we need to get ourselves together again put, to put all components of life into place. And that's what we do in worship. In this time, may we stop a while, pull ourselves together, and allow that spiritual side of ourselves to catch up with us. Let us pray. Come to us, holy God, as we gather before you, encircle us with your love, 
Bless us with your sustaining presence. Surround us with your grace. Draw us round your living word. And bind us to one another as disciples of Christ, whose spirit is in the midst. Amen. And I turn the service over to my colleague, Laurie White. Well, good morning, everybody. This morning, I wanted to show you a book that I really like called Praying in Color by Sybil Macbeth. This is the kids' edition of it. It also comes as an adult book as well, and it's published by Paraclete Press. And you know, in these tough times, and we're all dealing with the uncertainty and the unknowns, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit, oh, we just don't quite know what to think these days. And boy, it sure helps to find ways to talk to God, to connect with God, to remember that God is with us, that God's holding us in God's loving hands. And I, I think sometimes prayer is something we all struggle with. It's a little bit difficult. And this is kind of a guide for a different way of praying because there's no one way to pray. There's no right way to pray. This call is called praying in color. If you have had one or more of these prayer problems, you are not alone. Join the Frustrated Prayers Club, it says. You feel antsy and fidgety when you try to be still and pray? You start to pray and then you fall asleep? You're tired of the same old prayers you've said since preschool. You run out of words, but the prayer doesn't feel finished yet. You can't wait for your prayer time to be over and done with. You can't find the words to say for what you think or really feel. You wonder whether God is listening or even cares at all. You want to, you want to like praying, but it just feels like another chore sometimes. You start to pray, but you realize that you're thinking about tomorrow's soccer game or something that's going to happen next week or the homework you didn't get done. You tell God exactly how you feel, and then you wonder whether God will be angry with you. While prayer is the way we spend time with God, people often describe it as a conversation. A conversation includes both talking and listening. We talk to God, and we listen to God in our prayers. And when we talk, we use words. But we don't always have to. There's lots of other ways to pray without using words. Sometimes we say things to God like, why does my math teacher always call me Henry in class instead of my real name? Or we say, my friend Rachel has something called leukemia. Help her not to be scared and make her feel better. We say prayers like that. We say, dear God, please watch over my mom while she drives to Toronto today. We say, God, Sometimes I really hate my brother. God, are you really listening to me? Or we say things like, I'm sorry I copied off of Josh's math paper today. It was just one question. Was it really still cheating? And please, God, help me be a better basketball player. Or, my mom and dad are getting a divorce, and I'm really scared. I don't know who to talk to, God. Or we say, hey, this has been the best day of ever, God. Thanks so much. Our words make great prayers, but words don't always seem to be there when we need them most. Words are sneaky. Words play hide and seek. Just when we're searching for the ones we want, they go missing like socks under the bed. Some days, thank you, help, I'm sorry, please, are the only prayer words we can find. But praying without words is another option. What do you do if you're not using words? Well, here's an idea. You doodle. In drawing, a prayer makes a shape. You can start with your name for God in the middle. This person put loving God. That's what, how they understand God. Then you can put all or sorts of other shapes around it and begin to think of who or what you might want to pray for. Doodling is playful, aimless drawing. When the famous artist Paul Klee painted and drew, he said he was taking a line out for a walk. Well, doodling is like that, except in doodling, the line takes us out for a walk. Kind of like a puppy on a leash. When we doodle, we don't necessarily know where we're going. We don't have an end picture in our mind. To pray in color, you don't need to be an artist. 
You don't need to be able to draw a cat or a flower or anything at all. You just need to put a pen or colored markers or pencils or crayons on a piece of paper and start moving. Here are some shapes and movements that you can make when you doodle. Any kind of shape will do. There's loads of different ways to doodle. We can add words to our doodle, words for God, or we can word, add names for people we want to pray for or things we want to pray about. We can read a passage from the Bible and put that down and then start doodling all around it and see where it leads us. We can take start with a, a shape like a cloud or a square, and then we can add to that by doodling all kinds of shapes and colors all around it. When our God prayer is completed, we move to another space on the page and keep adding more shapes as more thoughts or feelings come to us. As we can add more people to our drawing. Sit with the drawing in front of you and let the names, images, and colors plant themselves in your brain. And spend another moment with each person that you have doodled about in silence. Take your sketchbook, carry it with you. Remember every time you think, oh, I'd like to pray about that or share some feelings with God about that, and write it down. We can keep adding until our picture is full of color and shapes and names. Another way is to trace around your hand and write God's name on the palm and then let each finger represent a person. If you have more than five people, we'll draw another hand. Or grab a utensil from the kitchen and trace it and let it be the beginning of your shape that you want to use. Trace around a dinner plate. Think of this as a big circle, a God circle. Inside, trace smaller circles with glasses or cups for each person you want to pray for. There's a God circle. Or bake a big tree and make it a, a, a prayer tree with weird shaped leaves. Don't worry if it doesn't look anything like a tree. That doesn't matter. Or create a weekly or monthly calendar and doodle someone different into each day of the week to remember to pray for them. There's lots of different ways to pray in color. You can just put down a phrase like, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, over and over again, and then build that into a beautiful, colorful doodle. When we worship God, we talk about our love and devotion. Draw a worship flower, a prayer flower, with God in the middle and lots of petals around it with names and people that you want to remember in prayer. Or what about a cloud? Here's an I'm sorry God cloud with drips of sorry coming out of it like raindrops from the cloud. It says here, I gossiped, I'm sorry. It says I told a lie, I'm sorry. Maybe we can let those things go just like the drops of rain. Or draw a gratitude or a thanksgiving plant and put different things you're grateful for on every petal of that plant. Learn a prayer scripture. Take a few words of, of scripture, write them down, and then turn them into a, a doodle. Or a stillness prayer. Here's one that looks kind of like a labyrinth with God in the middle and lots of squiggles around the outside. Remember, praying in color is a way to pray with your eyes, your ears, and your hands. It invites your mind, your heart, and your body into a prayer. You can use words, or you can just be quiet. What matters is that you want to be closer to God. May peace and love be with you as you draw a new path to God. Thank you to Sybil Macbeth for praying in color. These days, whatever way we can to find to, to be close to God, I see on Facebook lots of people are are paddling in nature and experiencing the wonder of God and the turtles and the and the beautiful things they find. I hear that I see people are posting beautiful pictures of flowers in their garden and about the bread they've been baking and about the things they've been making. Whatever way that we can find to find comfort and peace, let God be part of that. Let God be part of of, of of ironing the clothes and sweeping the floor. Let God be present when we do the ordinary, everyday things that are creative and life-giving in ways we can't imagine if we just remember that we're held in God's loving hands. We're in this together. We're getting through it together. And we are with God every step of the way. Bye.
Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient until the day is the evil thereof. We have a lot of uncertainty in this time. And it induces a lot of anxiety and stress. We worry about ourselves and others getting the virus. The return to school and to work for our families finances because of being out of work and the changes that are going to happen in the economy in the future, we worry about not being able to take part in family and community and social activities and other important parts of our lives. We can become overwhelmed with all the uncertainty that we have to endure in these days. There is much more anxiety than usual, and we may not in the past have had to develop skills to cope with it. While it is a normal and expected reaction to the pandemic, too much anxiety can start to cause harm. When anxiety and fear lead to panic, we can take precautions that disrupt our lives, such as demanding unnecessary tests and medical care, or stockpiling supplies such that they are unavailable to others. It is important that we take care of ourselves. What are the positive things that we can do to help alleviate the stress of anxiety. One, take action. We can use our concern to take positive and protective actions such as good hygiene, staying home when feeling sick, being careful in public by washing hands, wearing a mask, and keeping distance. This gives us control over our future by avoiding infection. Making plans that will ease the way if we have to self-isolate at some point. But do not have so much stuff that you could isolate for more than two weeks. Take care of yourself by eating well, exercising, getting enough sleep, and making time for favorite activities such as hobbies. Two, stay connected to people. Staying away from others can affect our mood. 
exchange emails and make phone calls, have coffee on the driveway, or do whatever it takes to be in touch with others. A lot of us have been able to learn to use Zoom, video chat, etc. to relate with others. It is a real need that we have that we connect with people. And I know a number of people uh, at Inside Out Church who are there because we really need to be with others. Three, help others if you can. Take care of family and friends who may need help with groceries or other needs. Our outreach committee and youth group have given opportunities to donate food to neighbor to neighbor and other organizations. Thinking about the needs of others keeps us from focusing so much on our own worries. Four, cut back on social media and the news. It is important to be informed my excuse for always watching the news, but constantly checking for updates or reading sensationalized stories can take a toll on our mental health. We can get drawn into conspiracy theories and bad stories, stick to trusted, verified news sources, and limit yourself to social media or news stories that may increase your anxiety. Some may find it helpful to talk through anxiety-provoking situations, but others may find that conversations about it just makes the anxiety worse. If you need to limit such conversations, it's okay to tell your family and friends that you just don't want to get into that right now. Just don't ignore all the important news and important inf messages that you might receive. Take in what you need and cut down the excess. Don't ignore the situation altogether. Five, explore self-management strategies. We are very familiar with meditation in the, our church setting. Some may find that they are relaxed by various forms of yoga or mindfulness exercises from the Buddhist background. The lesson today is a favorite in trying to keep perspective about life. Look to the lilies of the field. It was used in the movie about St. Francis of Assisi. Look at all that we have around that is so glorious. It is made by God, as is each of us. As we affirm ourselves, we can come to know that most of life is all right. You may find it helpful to say particular familiar prayers like the Lord's Prayer or others. Looking to a favorite Bible story may give some comfort or reciting the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm. The Old Testament lection that is indicated for today is the Exodus story about manna from heaven. There are reflections that talk about Moses just pointing out the food that is already there in the wilderness, that that's what God has provided for the people. We can look to all the resources around us that are provided by God. One positive exercise I have used when feeling discouraged is to write down 10 things that are blessings for which I am grateful. Then several times a day, I use them as a mantra in prayer that helps to focus on what is good and can keep me away from stressful thoughts. There are resources available that you may find helpful. You can check them out on the Canadian Mental Health website, the source of many of the thoughts that I have shared with you this morning. In our last newsletter, Lori indicated a BC website that has been helpful to some. Six, seek extra help when you need it. 
Here are some signs to seek medical advice or other support. If you can't think of anything other than this pandemic, if your anxiety interferes with your daily life, like going to work or avoiding safe public spaces, if you isolate yourself when it isn't necessary, if you feel hopeless or angry about the situation, if you don't eat or sleep well, and if you have illnesses such as constant headaches, if you need to get help, go and get it. These are challenging times when we are not sure about what is ahead. We had never expected any of this, and it's going to be a long time. We don't know how long it will be, and it will have lasting impact on our whole world. Anxiety is normal. Just know that God is with us and will help us through this. This we know. Let us join together in prayer. O Creator God, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given to each of us. We think about our families, our spouses and lifetime partners, our children, for many of us grandchildren, and for extended families that have seemed to be even more important in this time. We are thankful for all of those connections. We thank you, O oh God, for our friends, that they're there with us, that we call each other now, and we're just glad to have that kind of outreach. And we think especially of all the friends that we have in our church family, all of us who care about each other. We are thankful, O oh God, for our leaders. This is a difficult time and challenging time within our church, and we are glad for all of those who step up to help out in this time. We are thankful, O oh God, for the help of our government in its various levels. In this time, we look to them for safety, for information, and for support. For many, it is financial support. We are glad, O oh God, that we have this system within our country, that we are blessed in this way. O oh God, we are thankful that you are there for us. In the midst of all our worries and our fears, that we can look to you and we pray to you. And we know that you will help us and keep us safe. 
O God, just be with us. In this prayer and in the many prayers that we raise up to you during the week, we thank you, O God. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today and sharing in this time. May you be blessed in every moment in your week ahead. May the grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ, stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all of our tomorrows. Amen.